Uh, are we in the midst of a humanitarian crisis? Um, I have to say yes, actually. And I know it's very evocative language, um, but there's a reason the Red Cross, um, the Red Cross used that language, and that's because things are so bad. If you're in a situation where people are waiting to be treated and they're in pain and the service is struggling to meet their needs, then that is a crisis. And, and, and it's very real. This isn't just in one part of the country. It's everywhere and it's across the health service. He said it was one or two hospitals. Um, I think it's really sad when we have somebody who is the head of our health service in this country who says things that are so out of line with what everybody on the floor, on the shop floor, on the grassroots level is seeing. Me and my colleagues do not see what he is seeing. So how come? I mean, that's worrying in itself, isn't it? I mean, even you've got Theresa May, Prime Minister, who she's saying, well, you know, it's winter. It's always busy at this time of year. How can they be on a completely different page to, to everybody else? Does it make sense? Um, I think... I, I don't know their exact reasons, but they have to say certain things so things don't look as bad as they are. I'm, a, I'm really sorry to say, but we are really, really struggling. It is winter. It's worse at this time of year than at any other time of year. But we've seen a year-on-year decrease in performance. So I work in A&E and we've seen a year-on-year -year decrease in meeting our four-hour target, as we call it. And that's the target that somebody comes into A&E and then is either sent home yeah. or admitted. Um, you know, the average this winter for that target was in the 70s. We should be hitting over 95%. Mm. And rather than saying, uh, let's uh, put more resources in and, and, and sort the service out, Jeremy Hunt then moves the goal go posts and says, well, actually, that's just for urgent cases. Well, who determines what an urgent case is? Mm, if you're in A&E, it and should be urgent it's, anyway. It's for everybody, and that's not fair for him to be fudging the figures when the rest of us are working as hard as we possibly can. Well, he, um, he said, uh, uh, since it was announced in 2000, nearly 9 million people are using our A&E, up to 30% of whom NHS England estimate do not need to be there. That's interesting. Um, so I agree, there are a proportion of people who go to A&E but don't necessarily need to be in A&E. But there's complex reasons for that. Either people just don't know where to go or they can't get help elsewhere. And let's be honest, primary care GP services are stretched to the limits. Um, and they might have been directed to go there by somebody else and actually turns out they don't need to go there. You, you can say that, but the problem is that when Mr Hunt himself said that he bypassed his own GP and took his children to A&E... He said, I took my own children to an A&E department at the weekend, precisely, it's not this weekend, this was a while ago, yeah. uh, precisely because I did not want to wait until later on to take them to see a GP. I was working in that department at the time. I did not see his children. One of my colleagues did, and I thought that was disgusting. You cannot be blaming patients and saying you shouldn't be here and you're the reason why mm. things are bad and you're going and doing things yourself which are essentially hypocritical and that's not fair, that's not right. So we're going to hear in a moment obviously the impact that this is having on patients but what's this doing <coughs> to staff then? If you're going into work every day working very long hours, a hugely important role and you're not being able to give the service you want to, what does that do to you as a doctor? What does that do to the nurses? I think a lot of people understand that the crisis is not down to the staff. The staff are working flat out. Me and my colleagues are doing the best we can. I've had junior colleagues who have burst into tears because they're so overwhelmed on a shift because it's unrelenting. I've been working at three o'clock in the morning looking after sick babies that are a few months old and I need to admit them into hospital and I have to apologise to their parents because I cannot get them a bed in my hospital and I work in a big teaching hospital that's a major trauma centre. We don't have a cubicle for your child and I call ten hospitals across the region and I cannot find them a bed. Mm -hmm. That's really, that's a, an awful situation that should not happen. So if, if the Health Secretary, if Jeremy Hunt, were to, uh, to take an evening and a night off, um, would you suggest that he comes down to either your hospital or one of the hospitals around the country? Because um, there are, of course, as he says, maybe only one or two that are uh, suffering the, these problems, uh, to see for himself. That he works the night shift, that he works shadows the doctors. The problem is when Jeremy Hunt goes and visits a hospital, all the, all the stops are pulled out and it all looks very nice, it all looks very clean and people put on a show. I think if he can, he's more than welcome to come on a night shift with me or he's more than welcome to come on a day shift with me and see the children that unfortunately have to wait sometimes yeah. three to four hours to be seen, not just to be discharged. All right.